I'm Juice Mason alongside Morgan Reagan. How you doing, Mo? I am fantastic. I was going to say it's Friday, but I don't even know what day it is, and I'm still fantastic. <laughs> it's that time of the year where you don't know what day it is. Uh, it is technically right now a Thursday Ooh. as we record this. Okay. Uh, we're super excited to talk some Kings and NBA with a guy we haven't talked to in a while. You remember him, Kings TV analyst. He's done 800 jobs with the Kings, including uh, coach, assistant coach, GM, Monarchs GM. He's literally done it all, and he's one of our favorite people. He's the one and only Jerry Reynolds. What's up, Jerry? Well, man, not much, guys. Great to be with you. Obviously, uh, you, you two uh, represent uh, maybe one of the few highlights of the season. <laughs> so Ooh. it's good to talk, talk basketball with you guys. Wow. Ooh, you hear that from the legend. You know, I think he's he's buttering me up to then he's going to jab me later because Good. really he compliments you and not me. <laughs> well, there's some truth in that too, yes. <laughs> Jerry, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since we've talked uh, Kings with you, and I know this has been one of those seasons yet again. I think as we conclude the season, there are some – bright spots, but obviously some serious holes on this roster. I guess first things first, like what are your initial impressions of the Kings landing Sabonis and, and how it's looked with, with him and Fox? Well, I really like, uh, I like the trade. I like Sabonis. I, I think uh, it's so hard to find a highly skilled power player. And he is certainly that, you know, he's the best the Kings have had since Weber and, and, you know, and statistically, in many ways, it's even better than Weber. Uh, so, you know, that puts him in a pretty pretty good spot. And, I mean, the odds of getting a guy like him in the draft are, are so slim they don't even exist. Uh, so, you know, you'd have to be number one to get a, a potential like that. So, I think. So, so I think it's good. And I love Halliburton, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. but you, don't, you, you can't get quality without trading quality. I mean, that's the way it works. I know a lot of fans would love to be able to trade your 10th, 11th, 12th man and a third, second round pick and, and get an all star, but generally that's not going to work very well. So, do you feel like the Kings are now on the right track with maybe actually finding an identity with having Sabonis? And I say that, and it sounds like a joke, but it's not because there hasn't been an identity around for so long. This team has been constructed so oddly throughout the years. Is this the answer going forward with Sabonis? Well, I think it can be. Uh, You know, I definitely think he's a a building block, a piece that you build around. And, and, uh, you know, I I just, I think I've mentioned this before. I, I, you know, talking to to Larry Bird about it, you know, he, he certainly worked for the Pacers for years and was involved with, a bonus and you know his feeling was that uh you know the pacers really made a mistake that uh, as good as Halliburton was you can get those kind of guys easier and that they should have kept uh kept a bonus to build around and and, uh, and so he feels like and I feel the same way uh, I think that he uh so he is a piece you can build around now having said that uh there's a long way to go. You know, obviously he and Fox have a terrific chemistry and Fox's game picked up significantly. So you don't, you assume that'll continue. Uh, I don't know that you can assume everything. And, you know, and Harrison Barnes is a really good player, good, solid players, had a good, solid year. And, you know, it's like any uh, NBA players. He has some games where he's terrific and some games where he's not. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I have said, you know, on our, King's Herald podcast, I said, the, the good news is the Kings have got three really proven starters. The bad news is they need five. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, and I think it's like, it's kind of also the good news. The Kings have got uh, seven or eight really good quality roster guys, but, <laughs> but that you don't need that many roster guys. You need more, uh, a couple of starters and more key subs, but I think that's starting to crystallize. I mean, I really do think, Davion Mitchell. I, I mean, I, I liked him at the draft. I like him better now. And I think one thing I do think I was right on some months ago. I said that he reminds he's a player that the more he plays, the better he plays because he's a dog. I mean, he is stamina is tremendous. You know, he's going to affect the game defensively for sure. And then and I, and I think as he plays more, he gets better offensively. And I think we're starting to see that as he gets starter minutes. Shoot, the guy is, 
the guy can score. The yeah. guy can score. You know, and I mean, he's. Uh, I just think he's a guy that uh, you trot him out there 30, 35 minutes, and you're going to have a very productive player just about every night. Yeah, and he's. you're not going to ever question his effort, one. I mean, he's going to get after it defensively, and that's the good thing about him is even if he has kind of an off-shooting night, you know it's not going to impact the way he goes out there and plays. But like you've been talking about, I mean, the, the shooting looks like it has improved a lot, and he shot it well last year in college at Baylor. He shot it well in the summer league. This year's been inconsistent. I feel like I, I, I don't question whether or not he could turn into a good shooter. I think... You look at his mechanics, it looks good. It's starting to drop. He has the ability to create his own shot, get to the basket. There is a lot to like about him. Well, I'll say, you know, and the thing, too, and I, I really thought during the early part of the year, you know, the, he's just one of those guys, and, and I've been around him. I mean, it, that you, you're playing five minutes here, five minutes there. Uh, you're not going to you're not gonna see the best of him. Hmm. You know, yes. I mean, he's a guy that, as the game goes, he wears on guys, he wears on teams. <laughs> and then shooting wise, you know, a lot of guys, a lot, of, you know, I've always said, you know, it's like, he's a little bit like a Bobby Jackson. The more he plays, the better he plays. And, uh, and I think we're seeing that. And that's uh, to me, you know, you've got a guy, you've got a young guy that you can plug in there for 30, 35 minutes every night, I think going yeah. forward. Yeah, and Jerry, because I think some people mistaken guys as like, well, they need to be a starter. And it's like, no, they just need sometimes those starter minutes, you know, depending on who you have on your squad and who you're going to go forward with. Because I think some people get concerned with like, well, what are they going to do if they have to play De'Aaron and Davion so much? And it's like, you when you have good players and special players, you figure it out, especially minutes wise. Boy, so true. Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think he could be a starter. I think he could be his third guard, 35. I mean, you know, I, I don't think it, uh, you, you know, basically he just needs to be on the floor a lot. And, uh, but I think where he, he's unique at his size, uh, he's again a little bit the, the Bobby Jackson analogies there. I mean, he's way better than Bobby was as a rookie. I'll tell you that. He's better than Bobby was as a second year player. I can tell you that for a fact. So, so, so that's a real positive, yeah. but I mean, he can guard, he can guard a lot of two guards, you know, I mean, uh, just cause they're six, five, this guy can guard them. Yeah, he, uh, he can guard them better than Fox can. He can guard them better than Fox can. He, he can guard them better than Halliburton could. good. Uh, and that's a fact. <laughs> so, so, uh, like I said, it makes it easier to say, you not worry about, you know, matchup so much because, you know, he's not going to be overpowered and out quick uh, very often. I think the biggest thing, well, there's a couple of things with, with the Kings. I shouldn't say the biggest thing because I think shooting is an area they got to get better at. They got to find a way to get some more shooting. You mentioned the two spot and the four spot as the two spots in the starting lineup that are question marks right now. Do you think they have a, the starting shooting guard on this team? Is it could it be DiVincenzo if he gets rolling a little bit? Maybe you go smaller and start Davion. Do you, do you think it's on the roster at this point? I, I don't believe it is. Uh, you know, I'd like to believe it is, uh, but I think with uh, Dante, I just haven't seen enough, and I and I wouldn't want to withhold judgment until the season's over. You know, he just. But I, I kind of see him, and I'm probably wrong here, and everybody can have an opinion. But I, I just see. Uh, Dante as a disruptor, he's almost the opposite of Davion. Uh, I'm not sure you want to give him 30, 35 minutes, uh, you know, but in 15, 20 minutes, he, he's going out there and scrap and hustle. And some nights he'll make some really good plays. Some nights he's going to make some bad plays. Yeah. And, and some nights he's going to make his shots and some nights he ain't going to make any of them. But I mean, I think, it, I guess if I was going to make a comparison, he re really reminds me of a young John Barry, yeah. uh, you know, that, and John found a nice niche. Uh, he was a very good player on some good teams, not just here, but in Houston, but he was, you know, he was a 15 minute guy and, uh, you know, seemed like if you got, you know, got into big minutes, the, the, the value started to wear off <laughs> if you get my drift. No, I hear you on that. And it's, it's so tough. I, I see some flashes from him that I really, really like. And he's coming off that, you know, severe ankle injury he had last year in the playoffs. I love it how he gets after it. You said he's a disruptor. I, I love that about him. I love his rebounding. 
I think the, if the, there's one question for me is it's a shot selection at times. You know, I think he's an ultra confident guy, but there's sometimes you're going, hey, that that's a buddy healed shot. We don't need any buddy shots right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I, I guess if if somebody said, uh, where do you see him next? I, I almost think fourth guard is is where I would see him, to be honest, uh, on a real good team. Yeah, now, I know he was he was uh, playing you know a bigger role than that with the Bucks when he got hurt, but that's a unique situation too. They have Giannis, so. He didn't so have to do as much, you know. It's, it's yeah, like, you. It's like Grayson Allen now for him. I mean, he has to be able to spot up, and make shots. That's what his job is, and he can do do that. So you're playing with a truly great, and the Kings don't have Giannis to that Yeah, that's a good uh, point. In case anybody's noticed, and so, <laughs> so, so I think that, that that makes it a little different. But anyway, yeah, I think there's a. He certainly his his effort and his toughness and his confidence, all those things are positives. But I I, I just think the Kings need someone better, uh, better you know at that position. Uh, yeah, starting next year an upgrade, a tweak. And Jerry, you know another guy on this squad that I think has shown some other flashes is Damian Jones. And you mentioned with Davion, the more he plays, the better he plays. I was telling that to Deuce last night. I feel like. Damian Jones could be that type of player. He gets a flow. He gets a rhythm down. He could be more of a rim protector coming off the bench, you know, being that presence in the key. I agree with you. You know, he has really been a, a real bright spot to me, you know, and, and I think the thing I like about him, he's almost opposite of Sabonis, you know, so he's, it, it's a nice fit. <laughs> you know, he brings a different presence. He, he protects the basket better. And, uh, you know, actually, can, I think eventually he'll be able to make threes. He's got a pretty good stroke. Uh, and, you know, rebound per minute's pretty good. So, yeah, I think he's a, you know, as a backup center, I, I honestly think he's a better fit than, than Holmes, to be truthful, uh, just with his skill set. You, you mentioned the, the shooting, and that's one area with Sabonis that, you know, is just not consistent. He's not really a good three-point shooter. He'll take it every once in a while. He doesn't take a ton. The mid-range shot, inconsistent. He puts in the work. He's still young. I feel like he can become a, a decent shooter. Do, do you think that that's a part of his game he could develop still? Oh, yeah. You know, his free throw shooting is pretty good. That's usually a pretty good sign that you can take that out. And all he has to do is be able to take it out to the top of the key. And I think he'll be able to do that. I, I think, you know, when he played at Indiana, he shot more perimeter shots. I think he's trying to fit in maybe to a fault, mm. and, you know, going inside so much. People forget that, you know, while it, you know, his career up to, to Sacramento, his uh, three-point percentage was basically the same as Miles Turner. And, you know, people always say, Miles Turner can really shoot to three and Sabonis can't. And I said, well, they shoot the same percentage, so... <laughs> And so you make your own, and and that's on six hundred shots. So, right. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I I, I would I'm not wouldn't worry about it too much. Will he ever? I mean, he's a better three point shooter now than Weber was, by the way. That's true. That's true. God, I always you know. I mean, there again, it's like sometimes it's like well, uh, you know, it, that's Chris seemed to uh, you know play pretty well, and and that he can make one now and then, but but uh, you know the. Sabonis is is pretty selective in his shots, which is good because some guys aren't on the team, and uh, you know, and he's basically you know going to make a high percentage, you know, fifty seven, fifty eight percent for his career, you know, kind of. So that's, I mean, that's a good thing. I, I don't know how much sco more scoring you want out of him. You know, uh, in my mind, eighteen points a game on, you know, about twelve shots uh, that makes it really easier for your for your legit shooters pure shooters and the guys and because he really does want to play make and so I, I like that I I think that's for the most part positive I'm not sure you want to shoot it, have him scoring a lot more and shooting a lot more oh I'm with you I, I just want I would love for him to be just a little more of a threat a little more consistent out there to just to show that yeah because it would yeah, help with the spacing he, for sure oh yeah absolutely he has to become more of a threat and and I think he's aware of that we've kind of seen that the last few games where he got hurt you know where he would was taking some of those and he's been you know he knows he needs to so but but i i think like i say at the end of the day is uh if you really have and and the kings need to pick up a couple more shooters 
and and that'll take help the spacing as much as anything. Jerry, I was deeply concerned about De'Aaron Fox as the, the season went on because I'm like, man, this guy, I, I, I saw some great things out of him, but this year it just hasn't looked the same at all. He had some flashes, but nothing consistent. Since that trade, I know he's out with an injury right now, but man, since that trade, it's like you've seen a different guy and he's knocking down his shot more. He's playing, I think even defensively, he's playing more engaged, not necessarily a lockdown guy or anything, but more engaged. I feel like Sabonis has brought something out of him. Well, I do too. I think they're a, a, a great fit. You know, I think the fans have picked up on that. The ox and the fox. Yeah. The fox and the ox, you know, kind of thing. It's really true. And But Darren, you know, it, it is a surprising because I, I really always thought that, that Fox and Halliburton would be a great fit. But, but they didn't seem to be. You know, sometimes what you think will work won't work and I don't know what the reasons were but uh, it, it's clear that he's much better after the trade I mean and he's been terrific after the trade in fact I agree with you I was really frustrated with his play you know through first half of the year uh, but since then like I say his three point shooting has been you know it looks good free throw you know getting to the basket I was telling some other day I said it he's almost to the level of this stretch and I'm so old, I remember Tiny Archibald, that is uh, uh, Kansas City King's best, and where he was great, absolutely great. And, and I mean, where, you, where big guys couldn't guard him. And, uh, I mean, Fox has got a lot of that. Now, you know, uh, we all know that he's got to start the season next year where he left off and, yes. and do it, you know, do it for a season. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, we've certainly seen, you know, flashes of, of real offensive greatness. There's no doubt. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I, I think about the way that he's developed in Sacramento and he's been around this losing culture for so long. And then you hear from the outside, the fans, everyone wants to blame it on him. And then you hear national media, everyone wants to blame it on, you know, the organization and there's just blame everywhere. And it's like, can we, sure. can we just do one thing and can we just start developing guys and guys buying into developing in Sacramento and people being patient with basketball players. And the thing I get, Jerry, though, is that this team has been losing for so long, so everyone wants to win now, win now, win now. But I always feel like that is the wrong approach when really, if you think about how the game is played, you have to be patient with the way that you develop a squad together, a team together, a player within your system. And I feel like the Kings are finally on the right path as De'Aaron goes into his sixth season next season to be having more of that identity, but also developing some of the other guys together as a squad. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, patience truly is a virtue in, in life, but especially in the NBA, and it's where you have the least of it. <laughs> and and stability and this this franchise just hasn't had any stability in the last 15 16 years and you see the results you know people always talk about uh, you know you got to develop a, a a winning culture well the way you do that is to win uh, <laughs> you know winning i mean the winning culture comes after the winning not before i mean i, I mean it you know i don't care how how many good guys you have and good people i mean it it's about uh I always said that when the Kings were really good, yeah, they had great culture, but but the guys didn't always get along as, as well as probably some teams that weren't any good after that. Uh, but uh, but winning when you win, it takes care of all the little uh, you know little personal vendettas or jealousy, you know, all that yes. kind of stuff gets swept swept away when you're winning ball games and and that. So, but but I I, I think you're a thousand percent right. Is that that this team has got now in a position they've got to make there's no question Monty's drafted well he's got a but he's got a couple of big things to do this summer mm -hmm. and then hopefully uh you know they stay with stay with it and 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 it's not going to be a, a you know go from 30 wins to, to 50 wins uh it, it's going to be a process yeah and uh I do th I guess just speaking for myself I really didn't enjoy watching the Kings play most of the year. Didn't even like it. No, to be honest with you, Jerry, you're and, not the only and, one. It was, I mean, no defense. <laughs> dreadful. Uh, I mean, there were like oh. glimpses of, oh, Halliburton did something nice, but it was like if the Kings won, it's because they had a hot shooting night. 
That I mean, yeah, and and I mean, it's like with the, after the trade, I honestly like watching them play. Yeah. It's uh, you, know you know why were, we Jerry, we like it because they're actually playing basketball, <laughs> team basketball, and that's fun yeah, to team, watch. Yeah, the ball moved a lot more. I mean, not not saying they still found ways to lose because maybe at times they would revert to playing too much one on one or two man that sort of thing. But overall, I mean, it was just a you know. A lot more fun to watch. That's about the best way to put it. And my mind is, that's a good place to start. If you're going to have a good team, uh, that the ever have a good team, the fans like at first. It, it better be one they like watching. Yes. And and I think I think that potential is there now. A team, you know, and now just get get a couple more pieces that of talent because still talent is what wins in the league. And, uh, you know, buy a draft trade, whatever you got to do. Well, and that's what, yeah, kidnap. I, I, well, I like, I like that strategy and, you know, I know I just push patience, but how far away are this, is this Kings team now? Like how many tweaks away are they from, let's just say making the playoffs, the postseason? Well, I I think, I think they've got to have two players, uh, probably starting caliber players. And, and I mean, for sure, uh, two, two starting Cal I mean, and, and one player, at least of those two, that's, uh, could be the third best, no worse than the third best player on the team. So, I, I mean, I just think that's a, for them to be a play, a serious playoff contender. And that's, that's asking a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, now it's possible, you know, it's, it really is possible that could, could be the draft. I mean, you know, it's like last year's draft. If you get a Scotty Barnes. Mm-hmm. Or, or an Evan Mobley caliber player, well, yeah, you know that that would be enough <laughs> to yeah. to make you significantly better. Uh, and, and but but I mean, so the, that puts a lot of pressure on the draft. And I think it's going to be a good draft, and I think they've got a chance to get real help there if they keep the pick. Uh, but uh, but definitely, I think they've as, as much as I like uh, Metu and. And Lyles, I still think you need, you know, it'd be nice to have a proven veteran guy there. Yeah. Not, you know, not old, but a 26, 27-year-old man. No, I'm with you. I mean, <laughs> you, you look at those two guys you just mentioned, they're they're nice role players in the league. But if you're asking them to start, that's that's a weakness. And it's, it's not disrespect. Like, Trey Lyles, I think, does some nice things in, in limited minutes. You know, Metsu shows flashes, like, you know, against Indiana, uh, the other night when he catches fire, that was fun. But he he's a role player in the league, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You need those type of guys, and now it's trying to upgrade that. You mentioned the draft. Do you have any, like, sleeper names or anyone that you, you really like at this point? Oh, there's quite a few of the guys I like. I mean, I certainly like uh, Math, uh, Matherin from uh, Arizona. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, probably somewhere in the lottery, I would think. And, of course, Keegan Murray. I really like Keegan Murray. Uh, I, I just think. For the Kings, he'd be a perfect fit. <laughs> you know, I mean, length, athleticism, uh, looks like he can shoot the ball very well. Uh, uh, you know, I, you know, you just don't know where those guys will go. But, but it's, it's likely that between just between those two guys, uh, that one of the two might be would be available somewhere where the Kings are picking. And you know, Griffin kid at uh, Duke, I like a lot. He, I wish he's quicker. But he's strong and he can really shoot, and 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 as you guys pointed out, a guy who can really shoot uh, probably would fit pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to pretend to be a, a draft expert, that, but one okay. guy that I really look at and I'm I can't figure out whether I like him or not at the next level is Chet Holmgren from Gonzaga because like there's things you go, wow, he's a guy who's seven foot, he block shot, he doesn't he doesn't look like he could move that well at times but then you watch him like okay he can move he could shoot he can handle a little bit or there's some people who just absolutely love him there's others who say he's too thin he's not going to make it what do you think of his game i i think he can be really good i think the i think on the downside i think you're going to have to wait a mm. while yeah you know what i mean it's one of those guys that might might be certainly has a chance to be a, an all-star caliber big and, and, but it might not be quite as quick as, and, and might not have some of the impact that some of the other guys might have initially. Having said that, 
if you're at one or two, if he's there, boy, it'd be hard not to take him. Mm. You know, he, he, he is too thin. There's no doubt, but the game isn't as physical as it once was. It, it's a more skilled game and he has that. And, uh, certainly from the King's perspective, I, I, I would take him because <laughs> he'd be a perfect fit with Sabonis. Yeah. Come out, stretch you know, the floor. Just, I mean, in other words, cause, uh, you know, cause he'd play on the perimeter more and defensively he could protect the basket mm. a little bit. So, so, but that's not a problem unless you get one or two, you're not going to get him. And, right. and, there, and there's risks. I, I mean, I, I really think with all those guys, I mean, you know, everybody every year says, you know, the, this guy's a sure thing, that guy's a sure thing. And some of the sure things are not. And then others turn out to be, you know, be better. And it'll be the same way this year. I mean, it's, it's like I, I, like I just said, I really like Keegan Murray, but I don't know. You know, anybody says they know, it just proves they don't know. <laughs> no, that's uh, you, you know, I, I think he'll be terrific uh, player or could be a terrific player in the league, but he may, you know, he may be like so many guys like last year. You know, I, I really thought Jalen Suggs would be a hit the ground running in Me the too. NBA. And, and he just has not. And, you know, Toronto got a lot of booze for taking Barnes instead of him. And now it's like, of course, the, the booers would never admit that because <laughs> Barnes is, is a whole lot better. Uh, and, and Suggs has not really impacted Orlando at all. Uh, it doesn't mean he won't. You know, I mean, there again, I'm, that's one thing, the one advantage of being old, I remember that the Gary Paytons and, and Stockton's and Steve Nash's and some of those guys started off, Kevin Johnson started their careers kind of slow yeah. on a disappointing note and then really, really clicked in in about year three to where you, you knew they were going to be special. But uh, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's why I say it, you know, I mean, Suggs, it just hasn't worked in year one, but that doesn't mean it won't in year three. But Barnes, you know, Barnes is, is there today. You know, I mean, that's the difference. He's he is an elite player already. Yeah, he's ridiculous. And, and uh, you know, anytime a Ujiri does something that goes against the grain a little bit, I'm like, oh, he knows what he's doing. Right. He's, he, he has an edge on somebody. It seems like he always has. Uh, <laughs> he's always a couple of steps ahead of, from the rest of the NBA. And that's what I'm hope. I mean. Look, Jerry, I think it's a small sample size, but what we've seen from Monty McNair and just his two draft picks is like, okay, there's, there's, you know, good scouting, there's competence, there's something else that's there that I'm trusting in his way of picking these rookies. And so going into this draft, a lot of people are like, do you trade away for something that's already established and, you know, add that to the squad? Or do you trust in Monty McNair and what he's going to pick? How are you feeling? And are you confident about I, him? Oh, I really would not trust his judgment. If uh, You know, you got to from what he's done drafting. I mean, and having said that, I would trust him if he decided to trade the pick. Uh, for because at some point it's like well once you know what number you got you pretty much know who you're looking at yeah and, and so if you feel like well the, this is the guys we're looking at but we can trade and get somebody better at least in our opinion then do it you know as long as they're not 35 years old yeah. <laughs> I mean if, I mean if they're 25 I, I mean it's like who, who who's uh, scheduling seven eight years ahead you know I mean that's if you could get somebody that makes you better tomorrow uh, for the pick, I would certainly do that knowing that you got seven or eight of their best years ahead. Uh, but I, odds are you keep the pick because you're not going to get that a, a proven young player for that pick. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just, just very difficult. So, yeah, but I trust, I, I, I would think, you know, to my mind, he, Monty hasn't really made any mistakes. Uh, the only one I would second guess and, and, and is is not keeping bogey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have overpaid, and I think it's a little overpaying for bogey. But bogey's really good, and and, and not so much the fact that that uh, you wanted to pay him that. I mean, they had the trade lined up, but I still would have kept him because you could or you could trade bogey. Bogey's like Harrison Barnes. Uh, Two thirds of teams in the league would like to have him. Yeah, playmaker, shooter. You know, I mean, you are, he's an asset. Yeah. You know, he's always going to be an asset. And certainly if the Hawks want to trade him, they can trade him. I mean, they'd probably trade several other guys first, but which I 
I pretty much no, but uh, but uh, so so that I didn't agree with that. Uh, that would be my. But then again, you know, he hadn't been here very long and didn't really, you know, have maybe as much knowledge of, of, of Bogey, you know, sure. and, and certainly Bogey at Bogey's age, probably he or Buddy, one of those would have been traded out middle of the year, and of course, probably talent wise, you, you know, it would have been easier to trade bogey than it would be buddy because he's better and now Mon- monty's got a big decision this summer and we, we talk about like players and all this stuff but the thing we really haven't hit on yet is the fact that in all likelihood they're going to have a coaching search right you yeah. know alvin gentry is the interim guy i imagine that monty mcnair would love the opportunity to hire his own coach and at this point i don't think there's going to be a ton of coaching openings in the nba maybe the Lakers, you could make a case the Knicks could do something, but it, very limited. Maybe something wild happens in Utah, but there's not a lot of openings. So the Kings are going to have an opportunity to have a, a huge, huge list of candidates here. Do you have anyone right now that jumps out to you that uh, intrigues you? Well, I mean, there again, you kind of have to wait to see yeah. maybe a proof if there's proven guys available. And as you mentioned, I mean, a Quinn Snyder, I think if he were available and you, and you had an opening, you'd want to talk to him. I, I mean, I, I that's a guy you kidnapped, Jerry. That's one of those guys you say, no, you, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're coming a, here. What, what does it take? Gonna, he's going to make your team better. And, and as, <laughs> as Morgan pointed out earlier, I mean, really you're, you're looking at some point to have stability mm-hmm. and patience. And so, you know, that, that that's one way you have it. Get a proven proven guy you know can do the job given the right talent, and I think he's 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 one of those guys. You know, I mean, so 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 there's that. But so you don't know who's available. And then you then you know. But I would hope that they, if in fact they don't bring Alvin back, and of course I, I would hope they at least let him be part of the interview process. I think he deserves that. Uh, but uh, uh, you know. There's, there's guys, you know, assistants that may be, be ready uh, or you think are ready and proven guys that might be on, out there. Uh, of course, I'll tell you a guy, and this is, you know, I've said this on the podcast I do with the King's Herald, and, and, and I've been enamored with him for years going back through college, uh, Kelvin Sampson at the University of Houston. Hey, those guys play hard, man. <laughs> well, and see, he was, a, he was assistant with Kevin McHale for years. With the Rockets, yeah. With, with the Rockets, and, and I mean, he and I know Kevin well enough, and Kelvin well enough. I know who was doing a lot of the coaching, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I mean, I, I just, I mean, he's got an edge to it, you know. I mean, he's, you know, there's, uh, he would hurt some feelings, you know. He might, he might say something that might make, make somebody well up a little tear in their eye, but but I, I think that, you know, to me, he's the kind of guy if you're going out of the box. That, to me, he's one of those guys you look at. Do you think? Oh, well, Go ahead, I was going to say, do you think the Kings can risk going out of the box though? Like, I feel like this is one they have to get right. But what does that even mean? Like, does yeah. an established coach really even mean that? You know, I, I don't know, and and we don't yeah, know what Monty I, uh, will do. Yeah, you know, you're exact. I I don't know either, and and I mean, could they take? I think whoever they hire, if they hire somebody, is a risk. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think a and a, any assistant coach that's never been a head coach is a real risk. Now, some of them turn out terrific, and some of them fail. Uh, but you, but I mean, uh, you know, people always say, "Well, you don't want to hire a retread." Well, if the retread's got a winning record over a number of years, uh, the risks is less because you know there's a, a track record there. Somebody that's, you know you know, just bounced around the league a little bit. I mean, you don't always know. And I mean, certainly looks like uh, Udoka, he's been a terrific, uh, looks like it's worked well there in Boston. And, you know, but there's some that haven't worked so well. Uh, so, but, you know, here again, you know, a guy like Terry Stotts is out there and I, and I, I, I love that guy. And I mean, uh, certainly Portland made a big mistake in letting him go because they didn't, he really was the reason they won as much as they did. Not, not that they didn't win as much as they thought they should. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think, honestly, uh, he would be the best fit here because I think they, this team, if it's going to get better defensively, probably needs a little. Like I say, I think they probably need somebody with a little edge to them. Mm. You know, you know, it's going to hurt, going to hurt some feelings. I like it. Uh, 
And, uh, I mean, it's, that's kind of part of the, the gig, you know? Uh, so, so anyway, but, but I, 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 I just think too, you don't, what you don't want to do, I think from the Kings fans perspective as which is what I am, uh, just have one of those, okay, we're going to get a new coach and we hired Joe Fiduzel here. You know, I mean, it's like, let's, you know, take your time and hopefully uh, in the process, uh, you know, find, you know, hopefully you know what questions to ask to get the right coach. And I'm not sure they, they, they've done that in the past. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because this guy needs to be, this person needs to be here for a while. It can't be another two, three year thing. That's been no, too much of that no. over the years, Jerry. We've got more with Jerry Reynolds coming up in just a second, but we should tell you that today in every one of our podcasts presented by our friends over at the Burger Patch. Nom, 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 nom. Um, if you haven't had the Burger Patch yet and you're in this area, even if you're not in this area, drive in, drive 3,000 miles, fly yep. across the country because you should go to the Burger Patch. It's plant-based fast food and... Oh, they've got a new menu dropping, new menu dropping. Dude, look at this. And this is what I love about them. They always keep things fresh and new. And so you see that burger on there with all the mac and cheese, uh, with all the with bacon. With all that, you mean the Mac Stack Deluxe? The taste <laughs> of childhood made with Beyond Meat, Patch Mac, American Slice, Patch Tots, Hickory Strips, Dill Pickles, Grilled Onions, Patch Mayo. Yes, all plant-based, you guys. So seriously, though, you think about Mark madness going on you think about all the games all the playing games that are going to come up this is what you need to be eating and enjoying while watching all this amazing basketball coming up we love burger patch so much but also if you're like well i'm a sweet tooth they have shakes oh. well i just want fries they not only have fries they have loaded fries with a whole bunch of other stuff on there and they are so good go to burger patch yeah you can order online and when you do go to theburgerpatch.com they've got locations in midtown and east sacramento and downtown davis use our promo code dmp20 it'll save you 20 percent off your order that's dmp20 we appreciate the support of burger patch go to theburgerpatch.com we got to go around the NBA, Jerry. We got because yeah. we spent a lot of time talking about some uh, Kings basketball, and that's all well and good. But I know you are on League Pass all the time, bouncing around the league. Um, man, the, the, you mentioned Ime Udoka. This Celtics team, Jerry, got off to an awful start. There's questions about Udoka. There was like mm -hmm. infighting in the locker room. They they weren't getting along. All of a sudden, they've won like 22 of their last 26 or something crazy. They're on fire right now. Are, are, where are you at with the Celtics? Do you, do you think they could make some noise? I think right now they and Phoenix are the two best teams in the league. Wow. Uh, I do. I mean, they, they defensively, they're good. And like you say, I mean, they're on the same page now. I mean, obviously, you know, with their two superstars, uh, you know, Brown and, and Tatum, I mean, those guys are playing at a high level. And then Marcus Smart is really, I think, he's – kind of the one that's kind of pulled it in there you know he's uh such a tough buckaroo and but i, I think udoka I th like i say i think he i think he has an edge to him mm. you know what i mean and it didn't sit well with him at first you know and they they were kind of fighting it kind of spitting the bit a little bit you know because i think with brad stevens as good as he was was kind of the opposite kind of guy nice guy and, very uh, calm demeanor nice guy and, yeah. and it worked and it really worked when he had you know, for a few years when he had veteran guys that would buy in and all that. And then, you know, but it kind of ran its course. Uh, so he was probably the perfect fit to come in and change stuff and changed uh, an atmosphere. And then I think it, it took him a while. Uh, but to his credit and to Brad, they stayed with it, you know, didn't. Uh, and so, yeah, they're really good. I, I like that team. I enjoy watching them. And, uh, you know, they're getting mileage from, you know, getting – Al Horford back was a really good move. You know, Al just is one of the guys that fits in and, and helps you. Yeah. When, and, of course, of course, Brad knew that, I think. So that's smart. It's it's like when guys just buy in, it's crazy how you can see a team form and look so much better. And I just want to stick in the Eastern Conference here because then going to a team like the Nets. and Ooh, Kyrie's full-time now. Kyrie's full-time now. So <laughs> you got Kyrie back, but you look at – their team and what they 
didn't exactly accomplish this season. And I don't envision them coming out of the East necessarily. I feel like it, it changes now that Kyrie is back. Because if you have a healthy Kyrie who's playing great basketball, Durant's legit. Who cares about the Simmons thing? You can't even factor him. You got Curry. I, I, they're good. So you got Kurt who w didn't play last game, but sure. then in Patty Mills, do you think that although this team hasn't played together all season long, that all of a sudden they can just figure it out for the postseason? And obviously no Ben Simmons as well, but that this Nets team with Kyrie back can figure it out in the postseason. I think they have enough talent to, you know, and I, and I do think with their two superstars, they're on board with each other. That's important. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I tell you what, I agree with you guys. Just, I think the trade, I mean, forget Simmons. I, I don't know if he's ever going to play again. But uh, but I think getting Steph, or Seth Curry and uh, Drummond uh, from Philly was big pickups for yeah. that team. You know, because they, they added something they didn't have. And, and I think Philly's going to miss those guys. I really do. I mean, Curry, I mean, you know, he is a, probably as, as good a knockdown shooter as his brother, maybe even better. He, he can't, he's not as creative, certainly. Sure. But uh, nobody is. <laughs> but uh, but still, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, can they? I mean, the, the biggest problem they got is just they're going to be on the road a lot. And, and, but, they're you know, with those caliber of stars like Irving and Durant, they don't care. Yeah. You know, they could they could play out in the cul-de-sac here and be good, you know. Uh, so, yeah, they – but the East, uh, you know, I mean, you, you know Milwaukee as long as Giannis and Middleton are alive. Uh, <laughs> they're going to be a tough out. And, you know, with, with Miami, I can't figure them out. Sometimes I think they're really good. And then it's like last night, Golden State goes down there without anybody, yeah. and they beat them. They might need that. That that could be a wake up for them, though. They could get that going. They were fighting on the bench, and so I bet they kind of wake up after that. Well, I, I, you know, the other thing, I, I, I get tired of Draymond Green's bullcrap. You know, <laughs> I think a lot of people do, Jerry. Good lord! I mean, basically, he, he's, you know, everybody's punk, you know, blah blah blah. It's like you poured in two points, buddy. Uh, what your, you know, what what's your role in that disaster that you talked about? You know, it's like, come on here. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, to me, I mean, he's a really good player, but I, I've always thought that, that he got more credit than he deserved. I mean, uh, he is really good when he's got stars to play with that he can help them. Right. You know, uh, I know when Curry wasn't available and Clay wasn't available uh, a couple of years ago, they poured in, they poured in 15 win season. <laughs> uh, so he, he definitely. I mean, <laughs> Understands he, his he role. He ain't leading the parade. I'll tell you, he ain't leading the parade. I know that. No, you know he 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 might you know he might think he is, uh, but he ain't leading it. But uh, but he sure can help people that he, that have he, he can help people that can lead it. And uh, but but anyway, I thought that was a just a, a really a pretty on the Warriors' part. A real credit to them uh, to come back and have that big win last night without him playing too, without Draymond, without him the playing. other guys. Yeah. You know, you're talking about Miami and, you know, I, and we're going to talk about Brooklyn. And the thing that I keep losing sight of is the fact that Brooklyn's going to be in the plan. And for their sake, if they finish seventh, that might mean a first round matchup with Philly. Yeah. That could be in a first round matchup potentially with the Bucks or the Celtics. If they finish in the, you know, eighth spot, that could mean a first round matchup with Miami. So, this Eastern Conference playoffs is going to be brutal. So we talk so much about like, hey, can the Nets get it together? They haven't played a ton together this year. It, th there's no warm up series. They're not taking on like some. They're not the number one seed taking on some eight seed that they can kind of go through the motions, figure out like when they play, it's on. <laughs> like they they have to be ready to go. Well, they do. I mean, it would be a, an amazing thing to to from where they are, and I would say in general. They got no shot except it's Durant and Kyrie, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and those guys, I mean, you can't guard either one of them, you know, yeah. you, you can't guard either one of those guys. Nobody can. And, uh, if, and then like I say, I think their bench and their role players, uh, by picking up, uh, Curry and Drummond shoot, they, they, if they're healthy, uh, I'd be scared to death of them. You know what? You know, cause they're going to score. And, and yeah, they're going to score. They're so creative. I love that I keep on pushing on these other little things. I'm like, but, but in the postseason too, the importance of 
the team basketball aspect. Am I losing sight of that? Or is yeah. it just when you have that special of players, Morgan, that goes out the did door? Did you see it even last year? Harden's limping around. Kyrie's <laughs> not even there. Durant is almost, he, if he doesn't step on the three-point line, I know. the Nets are in the NBA Finals. I know. Right? Like, that's well, what's crazy. I, I mean, about. I do think, I mean, the bat, I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I think there's other teams that, I wouldn't want to have to bet the farm on it, but but I'll say this: don't ever forget it. It's a talent league. The only reason that that they might might not be able to pull it off is because there's other really talented teams in yeah. the East as well, and they'll have home court advantage, and uh, uh, and they're together and healthy and that sort of thing. So, yeah, the odds of them going through the the, the route they'd have to go, I don't think they can do it. But uh, the fact they've got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting the farm up against them either. Do, do you believe in Joel Embiid and James Harden on Philly now? No. Okay. I don't want to. Oh. oh. I, I don't have any problem with Embiid, but I, I, I really want failure from the Philadelphia 76ers, and, and I want Harden to get a – and I want Harden to get a new Daryl Moore to give him a two hundred fifty million dollar contract, Ooh. so he can, so he can be set and be like Wall and Westbrook in a couple of years. Uh, hey, so that, how's that for my how's that for my goal? So I mean, uh, to me, Harden is a Hall of Famer, all that. He's one of the all time greats. I'll give him that. But yeah. all, he also quit on two teams. Yes. Yes. It, so, it, so I love that's, I that's love my, hearing this. That's Jerry. my old school Jerry. There. No. He quit on two teams, so I, I quit on James Harden at the same time. Uh, J- Jerry, we all have like certain things. I I'm bugged by that too, and I, I even how Maury kind of handled everything. I feel like a lot of NBA fans feel that way about yes. the, the Sixers, where everyone seemingly loves Embiid because he's such a special talent. But it, it, wherever Harden goes now, I'm like, oh, I can't root for that team. No loser <laughs> mentality. Like you you lose a hundred pounds. And start passing it around to your teammates every <laughs> every new team that you go on and then watch next year the drama is going to follow and it's so annoying because he is such a special talent and we're not taking anything away from what he's capable of doing as an individual special talent and obviously including his teammates wherever he goes for the first 15 games but it's just it's tough when you love the game so much and you're a hooper or a basketball mind like you Jerry Reynolds where it's it's awful when you see guys are capable of doing this to the game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, of course, this uh, the, the thing that depresses me about the league now, and I wish the players' association would be more involved. And just too many, too many guys missing too many games for for beggaries. You know, in other words. Uh, Used to be, and you know, the Jordans of the world and the Magics and and those guys. I mean, they they played every game they could play. You know, yeah, they they really wanted to play every night, and 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 now it's like, boy, if you find somebody that plays, you know, seventy games a year out of eighty two, it's a, a rarity. And then, of course, yeah. you know, I, I mean, serious injuries are serious injuries, but when guys are missing for, you know, uh, I don't know whatever personal reasons sometimes it can be pretty bogus sometimes not so bogus right. but uh uh yeah i don't know no I, and jerry you know. i think i i'm with you there, there's also my, my other thing i i've said to morgan multiple times about the league and th- they won't do this because it's short sighted they're they're short sighted but shorten the season yep. and make the games more impactful. I'm looking at someone like Kyrie Irving, for example. Kyrie Irving was playing co- kind of part-time basketball, or he's more fresh than ever, and he's killing it out there. It seems like the players are able to play at a higher the level. Quality, yeah, the, the quality, the product out there is just better. make the games feel more meaningful throughout a year. It's an 82-game season. There, there's too many points in an NBA season where the casual fan doesn't really care because it's like, well, I'll just wait till the playoffs. You have to make the games feel more special. I agree. I mean, I'd like to see him go back to, say, a 72 game schedule. Uh, that'd be plenty of games. And then, but, but like I say, I, I think for a lot of fans, myself included, uh, you know, if, if the game isn't important, then why are you watching? Well, you're watching because you want to see stars. Mm. Right. And then yeah, yeah. M- more and more, you tune in and the stars aren't playing. That's true. Then, then what is the point? Why am I watching? Well, of course, in my case, then I just switched to another game. I ain't watching this. If if so, if so and so ain't playing, I, I don't care. 
You know, I, I mean, that's, uh, you know, I, I think the league, you know, whatever they can do to get the players out there more, you know, and it seems like with the 80, now we, we, we're accustomed now to, you know, the load management or, or just rest. Uh, you know, it's like, well, when guys sign their contract, they, they agree to, I'm, I'm going to sign a contract to play 82 games. I'm, I'm paid on the basis of 82 games. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's really the truth of it now. And then of course, so, you know, if you're, and if you're suspended for a game, you're fine that, <laughs> that 182nd. Well, so I, I just, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I just wouldn't take that missing a game for whatever reason lightly. Yeah. I think, I mean, the, you know, like, like Jordan used to say, he said, you know, he said, I want to, he said, when I go to different places, he said, there's fans that come to see me play. I, I want to play for them. No, and that's a big deal I, I think, to me. I, I mean, that, I think I, it's a big deal. I think I mean, LeBron's great about that for the most part, has been his whole career. Yeah. He's, uh, I think that to me is an issue where like, yeah, a player rests and, you know, they, they go to a city once a year and, you know, fans, like, there was that one image where I think Steph, I can't remember if he missed a game due to injury or whatever. Oh, yeah. It could have been rest. And like, <laughs> there's this little girl who went to the game with a yeah. sign and she's in tears. Now the, to Steph's credit, the next time they played there, she was at the game. I don't uh -huh. know if he helped get tickets or what. He went up and had a conversation with her. But, like, that stuff matters. And even, like, the nationally televised stuff where it's like, hey, the Lakers are on 800 times, even though they're 10 <laughs> games below 500. We need to see other teams. Like, I'm sure, you, because you watch League Pass all the time, I'm guessing one of your favorite League Pass teams, the Memphis Grizzlies. Ooh. Am I right on oh. that? Yes, you are. Oh, Jerry, well, this team. The, I love watching the Grizzlies and and uh, and I, lo I love watching Luke, of course. And yeah. I've got to, I really enjoy Cleveland, uh, the Cavs. Uh, so they're some of my favorite teams. But yeah, with John ja Morant. And, and of course, uh, they're good without Ja. Jerry, they're 15 <laughs> and 2 without him this year. 15 I know. and 2. <laughs> and I mean, but you, you know, here's an interesting question for you two. And I know you really study the game. Is if you could do that draft over, how many people you think would take Zion ahead of uh, John Morant right now? No, I'm no taking John. Ja. I'm taking John, no <laughs> doubt. Zero I doubt. I mean, I mean, and, and I mean, who saw that coming? Nobody. Uh, I mean, but the kid is—he uh, is really special. But, but I, I think the coach, the coach there, Coach uh, Taylor, I think, has, has just done a, a marvelous, marvelous job. And uh, but they're, you know, they've got a lot of just good fit guys that, uh, you know. I, I just thought with I thought when they got Stephen Adams, that was a mistake for that team, and it's absolutely been perfect because Stephen uh, doesn't doesn't care about scoring, and just you know knocks people around and gets rebounds and and uh, and sets great screens, and uh, he's helped them. <laughs> you and, know, Valanciunas is maybe more talented right. in a lot of ways, but but you know it it well they know what they're doing there. I mean they they've got a young team that really has bought in, you know, and getting marvelous performances out of Desmond Bain and Dylan Brooks and, 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 uh, you know, Jackson's and, uh, really, you know, kind of the forward type that the Kings probably need that long athletic shot block and three point shooting six eleven forward. <laughs> Jer and, and that those names you mentioned, they all got through the draft. And then it's like getting a sneaky pickup like DeAnthony Melton. It's even drafting someone like Zaire Williams, who looks super raw uh, in college. People are like, ah, I don't know if he's ready to contribute. He's playing impactful minutes at times for them. It seems like they've got a tight-knit group. They all play hard. They're the number two seed in the West. And I think some people look at it as like, oh, they're just a good story. It's like, I think that, look, I would still pick Phoenix to come out of the West. I love their depth, their sure. experience and all that. But I would not be shocked if Memphis could do it because they, they have the talent. They have a guy in Morant. They play defense. They're tough. They seemingly have enough depth. I, I think they're legit. I, I really like oh, them. Oh, I think their record says that. I mean, when you got the second best record in the league, that, you know, that says something. And they, and they do. And uh, I think they're a real threat. Uh, uh, I, I would take Phoenix, cause, but I, I think they're legitimate threat there and and it is interesting as you pointed out you know they've they basically for the most part have, have built their team through the draft with some question you know late picks and stuff in it except for Morant 
But uh, and then you see the Bucks who've done done it, you know, basically, you know, Giannis the 16th pick and and uh, Middleton they got from Detroit who was the second round pick and, yeah. and really. Nobody else is, was drafted by them, <laughs> you, you know. I mean, and and they're a champion. So there's, I mean, I always say that, that there's so many ways you can do it, but the main way is to get is to get really good talent, really good coaching, and and let them uh, grow together. Speaking speaking of good talent, you you talked about the Mavs and how you're watching Luca and how crazy has it been seeing that team, their defense step up, everything going on since the trade deadline, and then Luca also just really understanding the game at a different higher level of what he needed to do to his body and how he needed to treat officials on the floor. Yeah, that, that, that's all so – yeah, he really started the year. It was really getting hard to watch him yep. crying and complaining all the time. You know, it's almost like a low-level Cousins. Uh, and uh, But, you know, definitely to his credit, and I think Jason Kidd's, uh, I, I think probably, you know, who wouldn't listen to Jason Kidd that, that plays that position? Uh, but he certainly has done that. And, and the, certainly the trade, getting Dinwiddie has really helped him. Getting, of course, I always say getting rid of Porzingis also was equally valuable. Hey, if you'd got nobody back, yeah. you'd probably been <laughs> just as well. But Dinwiddie's been a, a perfect fit. And, and, and in case they lose Brunson, they've got, you know, I know that's kind of why they did it because I'm pretty, you know, they may lose Brunson, who's really good. Uh, but yeah, their defense and, and but Luca's, you know, he's a marvelous talent. He, I mean, he makes sometimes too many turnovers and takes some bad shots. But I don't care. I love watching him because he's he's a marvelous talent. <laughs> You know, Jerry, that you mentioned Luca and like he's evolved how he's kind of carried himself and he's learned. You know, he, he, we always expect these guys to come into the league when they're like 18 and just be finished products. Dude, when I was 18, I was a mess. Okay. Like you have You're to. still a mess. Okay. I'm still kind of a mess. <laughs> but you know what I point? Like that you have to mature. You have to go through things. The other guy I think about is Devin Booker, who I think for the first few years, he was always complaining. It felt like he was about himself. But God, he had the talent. You saw it. And now watching Devin Booker, I'm like, he's one of the best players in the league. If you watch Devin Booker on a nightly basis, what mm. he does, just getting to all of his spots, the shooting, the attack, he is a stud. He really is. You know, he is a kind of a, a mini uh, Mamba Kobe. Yeah. You know, because he really, really relishes taking those tough shots in the mid-range area. It gets to his spots, as you said. You know, I mean, able to knock down shots, wants to take tough shots and all that. Uh, yeah, he's been a real, you know, a, a nice a progression. You know, you're just getting better and better and, and then getting smarter and smarter and tougher and tougher to go with it. And, of course, I think Chris Paul has had some impact there as well. For sure. Uh, which, whichever where Chris goes, he does. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's been a great story down there. Obviously, terrific uh, coaching and Monty Williams and James Jones' front office. You know, they were just, you know, much like the Kings, about ten years ago, going nowhere, <laughs> and making bad drafts, and and then finally started clicking. You know, with Mikael Bridges and, and DeAndre Ayton, and then uh, finally got a couple of drafts that worked, and uh, and then trades and free agency. J Jay Crowder out there for anybody, yeah. perfect fit there. Of course, he was a perfect fit in Memphis, perfect yeah. fit in Miami. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's why I would say there, there, there's guys out there. Of course, I, I, I'm a real fan of Bobby Portis of Milwaukee. I've always thought, you know, he's one of those guys, if you get at the right price, it, it, you know, whatever role you have him in, he's going to help you. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I was just thinking when you were talking about the Suns, too, going back to Harden. Harden was sick of playing with Chris Paul, which tells you everything about James Harden. If you don't want to play with that Damn. guy, like Chris Paul's it's amazing. True. But you know what? Chris Paul probably held him accountable, and that's he don't he like went, that. He went and challenged him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I'll be surprised if you know within a year or so that he's going to decide he doesn't like playing with Embiid too. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. None you know, of us. I would just, be I, I, you know, as you can tell, I, my my hardened fandom has went away. Your hardened so, fandom is similar. I know you, there, a lot of people disagree with me on this. Okay, uh -oh. I, I have something against Carl Anthony Towns, and I can't totally pinpoint it. I just he does a lot of chirping, and it bugs me. 
Even I'm watching last <laughs> night against against the Suns, and like he had a dunk, and he chirped forever. Then he got teed up and was surprised. And then at the end of the game, I look up and go, "Oh, look, DeAndre Ayton with a 35 point monster game, hitting jumpers over Cat and winning that game." Cat and the T Wolves bug me. Yeah, they're um, they're an interesting <laughs> team. I'm amazed they've, but you know they they amazingly they're quite solid seventh. It looks like, uh, and. It does seem like when Edwards and 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 Russell and, and Cat all actually play the, the same night, which hasn't been the case, they're pretty tough. Yeah, you know they're pretty tough to beat. And 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 as you say, I I think they're, you know, with with Carl Anthony, I think I don't think anybody ever much questioned his offensive ability, but his defensive ability has been questioned, and rightly so. But but I think this is his best year. I, I really do. I think he's he's been probably more focused. I know he's had a lot of things happen in his life, but he's probably True. been more focused on the on the court than I've ever seen him. Jerry, you know, and, Deuce, Deuce needs you to get on his team petty train about Carl <laughs> Anthony Towns. Stop giving him all the no, love he deserves. I, I admire his talent, <laughs> and I'm with you. I mean, he has a 60-point game, and, and of course, like, dealing with all the off the court yes with his family the loss of his mom like i can't imagine going through all that stuff like that he's overcome a lot there but on the court i i think sometimes he has a cousins like persona with mm -hmm. the officials the difference is cousins looks kind of angry when he does it and car empty towns is Smiles. a big smile that's how i look at yeah, it there's a yeah of course I, of course i'm like that with every player in the league just that's why i like love baby on mitchell so much he he just plays. Yeah. Just plays. Yes. Compete, uh, you know, maybe sidled up to ref and ask ask a question or something politely. But uh, you know, the 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 league just each year seemed like it's getting worse to where every call and then, you know, on a, every broadcast in the league it's you know, every call's bad against the home team. It's like good <laughs> gracious. You know, sometimes the reason the foul wasn't called, it wasn't a foul. Yes. Yeah. No, it's you watch league pass sometimes and it's like, no, no. like the, the officials do get it right. I mean, when we do G League games, you know, sometimes I'll see it and I'll watch a replay. I'm like, oh, they got it right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it is hard. These officials have a hard job. I will say, I do think NBA officiating the last couple of years has taken a hit. They have a lot of younger officials right now. Yeah. And there's definitely been a transition. I think the game's harder to officiate. These, these players oh, disguise things so well now, it makes it really challenging. Yeah, the, I mean, the athleticism, the quickness of the game, the speed. Yeah, I mean, it's always impossible to call perfectly. Now it's e even less so. And I mean, which means what's the point of crying on every call because yeah. it serves no purpose. And, and I think it makes it even harder on the officials. And I think the officiating would be better if the league – and the players' association would really get rid of that stuff. I mean, people forget, and like I say, this is one of the advantages or disadvantages of being old. There's not many advantages, <laughs> but uh, is that you know you go back in the '70s and '80s, and they didn't do that. They yeah. complained occasionally, but it wasn't every call. I mean, I'm serious. That, that's what people don't realize. No, they didn't do that all the time, and and really, it kind of was better for the game. Yeah. <laughs> you know they they might bitch on a, a, a egregious kind of things uh, as opposed to every call and and right now as you guys know it's every call every call <laughs> no one ever fouls in this game jerry <laughs> yeah and so anyway so that's my old man stay off my lawn rant <laughs> you that. know what plus, at least plus, you called hey, it that so one last thing guys i mean i don't know if you know you feel the same way but it's amazing how the the what's called the interrupted dribble is never called and it, and every player in the league does it all every time oh, they yeah. <laughs> Carry, I mean, yes. they just pick up the ball and make the first move yep <laughs> you know and i mean that's fine if if, if you're not going to call it then don't call it for anybody which is exactly what's happening and then of course i think with the euro, euro step you're allowed one extra step somehow or another <laughs> in there they <laughs> You know, you get the Euro step and then hippity hop, and then that's okay. You're going so, straight to the barber. They shop. always call it the gather, the gather. And I'm like, well, the, I mean, now we're just identifying whatever we want as a gather step. Like, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. I mean, it's like, you know, we, we, we'll come up with something to rationalize clearly a, a rule infraction. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, but in all, I, I have to say, I, I enjoy the game. I, I mean, I, I do think the three-point shot's gotten too important. 
Yeah. And I, I, I think I'll still say they got to get rid of the corner three, yeah. make a much better game. But, uh, you know, just, you know, the, it, why not have the 12 foot free throws if you're going to have a <laughs> short corner three? <laughs> Jer- a Jerry's adjustments to the game. Jerry, uh, yeah, why not? Right, you know, certain guys. Hey, yeah, well, we'll have, we'll have a certain foul that you get to shoot twelve foot free throws to fifteen. That is hilarious. That is hilarious, Jerry. We thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's always well, awesome I, talking thank with you guys. You. I, I mean, I love talking basketball with you. You know, at any time, don't have to be on a podcast, but uh, but it's. Uh, you know, it's going to be fun for the Kings. Uh, they, they've got, I uh, sure wish Monty and the crew well because, uh, you know, they've got a chance to, I think, with a couple of really good moves, that's going to take that draft, good moves, and, and uh, fans can have something to look forward to. And, and But on the other side is that's exactly what they have to do. It's going to have to be a couple of really good moves. Well, we'll definitely have you on again over the off season. We'll talk some more hoops, and uh, we'll definitely well, catch up soon. And uh, yeah, we we can't thank you enough for thanks, for the time Jerry. as always, Jerry. Well, thank you guys. Have a good day. That's All the right. one and only Jerry Reynolds.